Shalom. First and foremost, as always, before we get started, I want to give our praise, our honor, and our glory unto Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham Rakakwadash, and next double honors to the head apostles, slash elder bishops of the great millstone who teach and who rule well. Peace, blessings, and safety to all you sincere Akim. Keep pushing, keep believing, and keep the faith, regardless of whether people hear and whether they forbear. All right, and this lesson is going to be entitled, This is Your World. But the kingdom of heaven is ours. All right. And uh, pretty much the uh, inspiration from this lesson uh, go, comes from just being out and about in the world. You see how proud Edomites are. All right. They're proud of, you know, being the oppressor, being the conqueror. All right. They'll brag about, you know, how how they just overcame. They won in war. They won in battle. You know, uh, proclaim that they're the best. You know, Edomite supremacy. All right. So, hey, you got it. OK, you got it. All right, you win on this side. OK, because what? According to prophecy, the most high is going to destroy the oppressor and bring him down to the earth. All right. So this is your world. OK, yes, you win. You, you got this right. OK, you got it. This is your world. But ours is the kingdom of heaven and your world is coming to an end, according to prophecy. All right. So you're going to be in the position that we are in very soon so enjoy it while it lasts all right this is psalms 123 and verse 4 it says our soul is exceedingly filled with the scorning of those that are at ease all right so scorning mocking all right that's what they do they mock they scoff all right they scorn okay they, they look down upon you know uh jake is in a low estate we get treated pretty badly here in babylon america uh, the daughter of babylon which is america all right so once again, you know, this is this is your world. You got it. OK. And it's all good because once again, this world is coming to an end. So your kingdom is temporal. All right. Ours is everlasting. This is the book of Job, chapter 20 and verse five. It says that the tri triumphing of the wicked is short. All right. So, yes, you've won. OK. You conquered the earth. All right. You're on top. Cool. But your triumphing is short and the joy of the hypocrite is. As but for a moment, it's just a t your rulership, your kingdom is just a tiny speck, all right, compared to what the children of Israel are going to inherit, all right. Everything that you worked hard for is going to be destroyed in one hour, according to prophecy, all right. Let's go to Psalm 73, and we'll read some characteristics about the wicked, all right. Esau Edom, the so called white man. Okay, Psalm 73, and verse, um, we'll start, we'll start with verse 3. It says, for I was envious at the foolish when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. For there are no bands in their death, but their strength is firm. They are not in trouble as other men, neither are they plagued like other men. Okay, and uh, people always talk about karma. Okay, karma doesn't exist. How do we know that? Because if karma existed, Esau, even the so-called white man, would he would have been got destroyed. He would have been got stumped out. All right, but as we know, according to prophecy, the Heavenly Father is saving the greatest and worst destruction for last. Okay, so once again, go ahead, live it up. You know, go ahead and do, you know, you got your bragging rights. Talk about, you know, how much better you are. You know, how we're criminals, we're this, we're that, accusing us of all these different things, right? But then, when the Hebrew Israelites come out with prophecy, okay, saying that the Most High is going to destroy the oppressor, the conqueror of this world, now all of a sudden, well, now we, we all, we all one, we all brothers in Christ, all right? Nope. Don't work that way. The scriptures say what they say. So go ahead. Once again, laugh it up. Have fun. Enjoy your kingdom because it's coming to an end very soon. Okay. You're not in trouble as other men. Neither are they plagued like other men. Verse six. Therefore, pride compasseth them about as a chain and violence covereth them as a garment. Their eyes stand out with fatness. They have more than heart could wish. They are corrupt and speak wickedly. Concerning oppression, they speak loftily. See that? Concerning oppression, they speak loftily. So they talk they talk their nonsense, okay? You know, they once again, they brag about how they're the greatest, they're the best, you know, racist uh, comments and remarks, all right? It says, they set their mouth against the heavens and their tongue walketh through the earth, all right? The whole earth has been defiled with the philosophies of Esau, Edom, the so-called white man, all right, and his false prophet, which is the uh, Roman Catholic Church. OK, it says, therefore, his people return hither and waters of a full cup are wrung out to them. 
And they say, how does the Most High know? And is there knowledge in the Most High? All right, it says, behold, these are the ungodly who prosper in the world. They increase in riches. Okay, so this, who is this talking about? Once again, Esau, even the so-called white man. All right, his portion is in this life. Okay, let's go to Job, the 21st chapter. All right, Job chapter 21 and verse um, verse 7. It says, Wherefore, for what reason do the wicked live become old? Yea, are mighty in power. Their seed is established in the sight with them, and their offspring before their eyes. Their houses are safe from fear, neither is the rod of the Most High upon them. All right, it says, uh, Their bull gendereth and faileth not, their cow calveth and casteth not her calf. All right, meaning what? Meaning that they continue to grow in riches, okay? It says, because really um, um, flocks and cattle and land, that's true wealth right there. It says, they send forth their little ones like a flock and their children dance. They take the timbrel and harp and rejoice at the sound of the organ. They spend their days in wealth and in a moment go down to the grave. Therefore say they unto, unto the Most High, depart from us, for we desire not the knowledge of thy ways. What is the Almighty that we should serve him? And what profit should we have if we pray to him? Lo, their good is not in their hand. The counsel of the wicked is far from me. All right, so the Most High, he's the one that set them up, though. Okay? Their good is not in their hand. Uh, they, didn't, they didn't acquire it because they're this wonderful, special people. Okay, the scriptures actually call them a uh, base man. Okay, according to Daniel 4 and 17. All right? But... Once again, this is all part of his movie. He's raising them up. He's raising up Esau, even the so-called white man, just like he raised up ancient Pharaoh to bring that destruction to him, to show his power by bringing destruction to, the, to their kingdom. Okay, It says, verse 17, How often is the candle the wicked put out, and how often cometh their destruction upon them? The Most High distribute the sorrows in his anger. They are as stubble before the wind and as the chaff that the storm carrieth away. The Most High layeth up his iniquity for his children, he rewardeth him and he shall know it. Okay, when when, when his kingdom goes down, all right, he's going to know in that day that this is the doing of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. Okay, it says, His eyes shall see his destruction and he shall drink of the wrath of the Almighty. So once again, go ahead, live it up, you know, talk your crap, say what you got to say. Yeah, that's right, you're better, you conquered us, you won. Go ahead. It's, it's, all, it's all fun and games, but once again, when these prophecies come out, and we tell you what's going to happen before it even happens, that your kingdom is falling and the writing is on the wall. Okay, the writing is on the wall. You, uh, uh, Jake, uh, not Jake, Esau, he knows his world is coming to an end. All right, he knows he's about to lose his rulership. Okay, that's why he's about to come down having great wrath soon come. Okay, this is um, Luke the 16th chapter. And we'll start at verse uh, 19. It says, there was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen. And fared sumptuously every day. This rich man is Esau. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, which was laid at his gate full of sores. Okay, Lazarus is Jacob. Okay, this is symbolic. It's a parable. It says, and desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Okay, and what does that represent? All right, Jake is at a low estate. Esau, he could easily, he, had, he got so much money and power, he can end world hunger if he wanted to. But they're not going to do that because they're the devil that the Bible speaks of. Okay. So, the, so Lazarus, okay, he, he's desiring to be fed from the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. All right, just, just, and really that also represents Jake just asking for the bare minimum just to be treated like a human. That's it, just to be treated with fairness. That's not going to happen. And now we understand why, okay? Now we understand why. We understand it's because the Most High, he's going to bring the judgment, okay? The more that, that Esau does unto us, it says that they're going to receive double, okay? Double all the things they've done to us, you know, going back. All the way to uh, to uh, Amalek, okay, smiting the hindermost of the children of Israel, fleeing from fleeing from ancient Egypt. All right, all the way to to 70 A.D. Okay, to what the Greeks and the Romans did to the Israelites, all the way up until now. Okay, here in America, Babylon the Great, slavery. Okay, all these all the iniquity that Esau has done, the so-called white man has done, not just to us, but around the world. All of it is going to be brought back on them in a very short period of time. And it's going to be double, okay? So once again, all right, that 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 pride is great because the greater the pride, the greater the fall, and it's going to be a beautiful thing, okay? So we beg from we beg for crumbs from the rich man's table, just beg 
to be treated as equals, all right, treated treated fairly. And that's le- that's at least what what simple jakes are doing, slow bellied niggas. All right, they're begging for their enemy to treat them fairly. But us, that's in the truth. We understand that's never gonna happen because he is not set up to do that. He is set up to be our punishment. Okay, he was put in the power to punish us for us going against the heavenly Father. All right, but continuing on, okay, verse twenty two. It's, it's like, I'm going to finish, I'm going to read 21 again. And desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table, moreover the dogs came and licked his sores. And these dogs are these heathen nations, all right, where they took part in that, in that, um, in that destruction of the children of Israel, all right. It says, and, it, and they, for, they forded the affliction, according to Zechariah chapter 1 and verse 15, I believe it is. Okay, it says, and it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. Okay, hell represents hell is the grave in, in the scriptures, and in hell he lift up his eyes, being in torments, and seeth Abraham afar off, and Lazarus in his bosom, and he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus, that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. But Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receivest good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things so jake received all the evil all right esau received the good this is his kingdom once again you got it you won but now he is comforted and thou art tormented okay so what's going to happen is going to be reversed so the first shall be last and the last shall be first okay esau he's going to be the one in torments now the rich man okay and and lazarus is going to be comforted and is going to inherit the kingdom okay it says and beside this between us you between us and you there is a great gulf fixed so that they which would pass from hence to you cannot, neither can they pass to us that would come from thence. All right, so, so what what is this? What is going into his, his lot? His 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 um his his um future is written, or his judgment is already written. There's no escaping it. Okay, there's no way to escape it. This is this is Esau's future. All right. Once again, it's a beautiful thing. So, let's get a few more scripts and get ready to close out. Lamentations. All right, chapter uh. Lamentations chapter 4 and verse 21. And it reads, it says, Rejoice and be glad, O daughter of Edom, that dwellest in the land of Uz. The cup also shall pass through unto thee. Thou shalt be drunken and shalt make thyself naked. The punishment of thine iniquity is accomplished, O daughter of Zion. He will no more carry thee away into captivity. He will visit thine iniquity, O daughter of Edom. He will discover thy sins. So we see the dichotomy there. All right, let's get that in the blue letter, okay? I like I like the way that it reads in the blue letter. Okay, Lamentations, chapter four. Actually, it's like another blue letter. Let's get it in the NLT. My bad. Excuse me. All right, Lamentations, chapter four, and verse twenty-one, in the New Living Translation, it says, "Are you rejoicing in the land of Uz, O people of Edom? Are you having fun? You having fun? You enjoying your kingdom? Good. You should be. All right. Like I said, you won." All right, you got it. You're the conqueror. You're the oppressor. You got it. You're above us. You're better than us on this side. All right. <laughs> hey, like I said, la you know, laugh it up. Have fun. Enjoy it. And really, I'm, I'm being sarcastic because they're not better than us. They are a base man, according to prophecy, according to the scriptures, Daniel 4 and 17. But that's how they feel. And they 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 make sure that at every chance they get, they tell you how you're beneath them. OK, so once again, enjoy it. Okay, it says, are you rejoicing in the land of Uz, O people of Edom? But you, too, must drink of the cup of the Lord's anger. You, too, will be stripped naked in your drunkenness. O beautiful Jerusalem, your punishment will end. See, our punishment's coming to an end. You will soon return from exile. But Edom, Esau, Edom, the so-called white man, your punishment is just beginning. And soon your many sins will be exposed. All right, beautiful. Beautiful. All right, so let's, let's let's get a few more scripts. Isaiah chapter 18. Excuse me, Isaiah 14. Isaiah 14 and verse 1 says, For the Lord, Yahweh, will have mercy on Jacob and will yet choose Israel and set them in their own land. And the strangers shall be joined unto them and they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. And the people shall take them and bring them to their place. And the house of Israel shall possess them in the land of the Lord for servants and handmaids. And they shall take them captives whose captives they were, and they shall rule over their oppressors. So you're going into slavery, Sleazy. Are right, you going into slavery? It says, and it shall come to pass in that day 
that the Lord shall give thee rest from thy sorrow and from thy fear and from the hard bondage wherein thou was made to serve. That thou shalt take up this proverb against the king of Babylon, king of America in the Western Roman Empire, all right, which is Esau, even the so-called white man, and say, How hath the oppressor ceased? The golden city ceased. The Lord, Yahweh hath broken the staff of the wicked and the scepter of the rulers. He who smote the people in wrath with a continual stroke, he that ruled the nations in anger is persecuted and none hindereth. Okay, so what's going to happen? Like I said, all, right, all the evils that you have done is going to return, ret be returned back unto you double. All right, you're going to be persecuted and no one's going to hinder. The whole earth is at rest and is quiet. They break forth into singing. All right, when you go down, everyone's going to rejoice. Okay, it says, Yea, the fir trees rejoice at thee. And the cedars of Lebanon saying, Since thou art laid down, no feathers come up against us. I'm going to skip down to, um, actually, I'll read 9. It says, Hell from beneath is moved for thee to meet thee at thy coming. All right, and that hell is going into the condition, a low estate that you're about to go into. Okay, It stirreth up the dead for thee, and the dead are these heathen nations. Even all the chief ones of the earth, see it tells you that. It hath raised up from their thrones all the kings of the nations. And they shall speak and say unto thee, Art thou also become weak as we? Art thou also become like unto us? So all the nations are going to look at the oppressor of the earth and say, Oh, goodness, look, look, he's become weak. And they're going to ravish you. There's not going to be a damn thing you can do about it. Because it's the judgment of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. And once again, you had fun while you were doing it. While you were ravishing, destroying, pillaging, killing, stealing, destroying. Okay, um, you know, all these different things. When you were doing these things, you had fun doing it. And then now your descendants on down the line, all right, they enjoy the benefits of that and they brag about it. OK, they tell you stuff like pull up your bootstraps. Oh, just uh, you, you niggers are so lazy. Stop being lazy. They, they'll say stuff like that, you know, or maybe if you get off, if you, if you stop uh, being a thug or blah, blah, blah. All right. Having no having no um, or, or not taking into account all the things that have happened over the past couple of hundred years as if. You you have you have a, a whole nation of people that was in slavery and it's not going to affect their most recent descendants in any way. All right. But once again, we read that earlier in Psalms, the 73rd chapter concerning oppression. They speak loftily. They're very proud. Right. So the nation is going to look at them like, oh, wow, this he's become weak as us. So, and they're going to team up against you and completely destroy you. OK. It says verse. Uh, I'm skip down to verse 12. It says. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which did didst weaken the nations? And Lucifer's talking about the elites. People know of as the Illuminati, the elites of Esau, Edom, the so-called white man, which the vast majority of them are j -O's. Okay, it says, For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of the Most High. I will also sit upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds, and I will be like the Most High. Yet... Thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. And they that see thee narrowly shall look upon thee and consider thee, saying, Is this the man that made the earth to tremble, that did shake kingdoms? So is this the man? It ain't talking about no angel, okay, because Christians think that this is talking about a fallen angel. No, this is talking about the elites of Esau, Edom, the so-called white man, okay, the ones that are ruling the earth right now. It says that made the world as a wilderness and destroyed the city thereof, that opened not the house of his prisoners. That's us. All the kings of the nations, even all of them, lie in glory, every one in his own house. But thou art cast out like an abominable branch, as the raiment of those that are slain, thrust through with a sword, that go down to the stones of the pit as a carcass trodden underfoot. Okay, it says, Thou shalt not be joined with them in burial, because thou hast destroyed thy land and slain thy people. So he's even, he's even going to kill his own people, trying to, trying to get to Jacob. Okay, it says, The seed of evildoers shall never be renowned. Prepare slaughter for his children for the iniquity of their fathers, that they do not rise nor possess the land, nor fill the face of the world with cities. For I will rise up against them, saith the Lord of hosts, and cut off from Babylon the name and remnant and son and nephew, saith the Lord. And this is talking about uh, uh, modern day Babylon, okay? The daughter of Babylon, not, actual, not ancient Babylon, because Christians are trying to say it's talking about ancient Babylon, okay? Well, let's, go, let's get another precept. A little bit more, and we'll close out with this last one. Job 18. Job chapter 18. And let's see. Okay. Job chapter 18. And let's get um 
fire. Okay. Job chapter 18 and verse 5. Yea, the light of the wicked shall be put out, and the spark of his fire shall not shine. The light shall be dark in his tabernacle, and his candle shall be put out with him. The steps of his strength shall be straightened, and his own counsel shall cast him down. For he, And who is that? That's all the different heathen nations. Because you go to Psalms, the 83rd chapter, they, are, they were confederate against the Israelites. Okay, but all those nations that were confederate with him are going to turn their back on him, pursuing to the book of Obadiah. All right. So his own counsel is going to cast him down. For he is cast into a net by his own feet, and he walketh upon a snare. The jinn shall take him by the heel, and the robber shall prevail against him. The snare is laid for him in the ground, and a trap for him in the way. Terror shall make him afraid on every side, and shall drive him to his feet. His strength shall be hunger bitten, and destruction shall be ready at his side. It shall devour the strength of his skin. Even the firstborn of death shall devour his strength. This is Yahweh Shai. His confidence shall be rooted out of his tabernacle. It shall bring him to the king of terrors. It shall dwell in his tabernacle because it is none of his. Brimstone shall be scattered upon his habitations by way of nuclear missiles. His roots shall be dried up beneath and above shall his branch be cut off. His remembrance shall perish from the earth and he shall have no name in the street. He shall be driven from light into darkness and chased out of the world. He shall neither have son nor nephew among his people nor any remaining in his dwellings. Okay, because according to Obadiah, all Edomites are going to be cut off by slaughter after a thousand long years of slavery. Okay, and that's part of their punishment. That's part of them receiving uh, double, okay, for their iniquity. But anyways, I'm going to close out with that. All right, once again, okay, as always, Lord's will, this is edifying to the elect, where may be scattered across the four winds of heaven, the four corners of the earth. All praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, Rekak, All right, our power is coming down very soon to avenge us against our oppressors, and we couldn't be more excited. So with that being said, until next time,